Hi YouTube, my name is Hilda and I'm super excited today because this is my first dance chat and I've been wanting to do this for many years. Um, I had a blog for a while but I found that video is such a great uh, medium to communicate with so I hope you enjoy my video and the, uh, the information that you're gonna get from this. So I want to start my video with showing this beautiful painting behind me because I just bought it yesterday uh, from a Rwandan artist here in Rwanda. So for those that don't know me, I'm a dance artist uh, originally from Belgium, lived in England for about 15 years and I moved to Rwanda a year ago to study traditional Rwandan dance. Um, I love this painting so much because it encompasses encompasses what I love about Rwanda. I love the colors and I love the image it portrays and I bought it from an artist called Patti Maestro um, and he donated this uh, painting. This, this painting was donated for Root Foundation which is an organization I work with who work with um, disadvantaged children in the rural areas in Kigali. Um, and all the funds for this painting are going to that organization. So I just wanted to give a little shout out for that amazing artist. Um, so let me put the painting away. And in the meantime, feel free to make yourself a cup of tea. Pause this video for a moment. I already got my tea ready uh, because uh, you might want to really sit back and relax for this video. I'm going to talk about... Uh, finding your voice as a dance artist. So for those that know my work, I'm a fusion dancer. I love combining different styles of dance um, and I'm inspired from many different areas. So um, having been dancing for 22 years now, been making work for about 15 years, um, I feel like I have a lot to share about that topic. Um, so I decided to make it in five bite-sized little tips or um, little comments. So, number one. <laughs> so, finding your voice as a dance artist. Train with as many dancers as possible um, and also as many styles as possible. Uh, that doesn't mean that you necessarily need to use those dance styles for your um, fusion dance or whatever uh, will, will come from it. But, for example, um, I studied many different dance styles, hip-hop, uh, contemporary dance, ballet, jazz, Indian dance, Brazilian dance, uh, Rwandan dance, uh, Senegalese dance, and I, I, I feel like all of those different things have made me into the artist I am today. And sometimes we can be influenced um, in ways we didn't even know. For example, you might study classical Indian dance and never really use the dance aesthetic in your own performance but you might be inspired by the idea of using the way Indian dance uses storytelling um, and you, so sometimes we are inspired in ways that is not necessarily a direct inspiration so yeah that's number one I want to add to that as well study with the source um, so perhaps you're really inspired by a, a dancer and yes, definitely study with that dancer, but also find what is their inspiration, who are their teachers. Uh, I'll give you an example. I saw a video by Donna Mejia, uh, I think in 2009 um, or something, and I was so inspired by her style of contemporary fusion. So I started studying with her and I found out that her main teacher, she would say, uh, would be Sil uh, Rosangela Silvestra, who is a Brazilian contemporary dancer. Um, so I started studying with Rosangela because um, I thought if she um, made Donna Mejia into the dance artist um, she is today, and she speaks so highly of her, obviously she, needs, uh, she has a lot to give. So I went to Brazil every year for about five years to study with her. So talking about that, also a point I would like to point out when I say study at the source is study the dance at its original source. 
So for example, I went to Rosangela Silvestre studying, studying her technique in Salvador in Brazil. Um, if, you, if you have the finances and if you have the time, go to India to study Indian dance, go to Spain to study flamenco. The experience is so different than learning these dances in a studio in London or New York. Um, it's going to influence you in so many different ways um, because you're surrounded by its culture that the, that the dance was founded in. So that's also a reason why I moved to Rwanda because I fell in love with traditional Rwandan dance and I wanted to really understand the dance. So I felt like I have to move here. Um, I'm not saying you have to move to a different continent, but um, you know, just from week long intensives into a different environment can really um, feed and nurture the artists within you. So a little bit about that. So I was talking about finding your voice as a dance artist. So dance artist. So we really have to work on those two elements. And I'll talk more about the art of a dance artist in a moment. So that's point number one, study with as many different dances as you can and as many different dance styles and make sure you study at the source. Number two, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I had to cheat here for a moment so I don't make any mistakes. <laughs> but don't, make, uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. And from my own experience, um, back in 2009, I was so inspired. And actually a big reason was Donna Mejia's um, video I saw somewhere. I was so inspired by contemporary dance and I really wanted to create this fusion style um, which mixes elements of belly dance with contemporary dance because I thought it was beautiful. Um, in my head it looked amazing, <laughs> of course, but um, I wasn't really able to execute what was in my mind because I just didn't have the experience and the technical background yet. So I started studying at Laban to try and understand contemporary dance, study contemporary dance um, in a great school. And um, it took me about eight years to get to the point where I did a performance that I was really proud of because I was like, yes, that was what I had in my head back in 2009. Um, so it takes a long time, um, but I had to go through that process of kind of trying out what was in my head in able to be able to get to the place where I was really happy with the art I was creating. Uh, so don't make, be afraid to make mistakes and realize it's gonna take a long time. Um, I often think about dance art as a fine wine. Um, so you have to sometimes let it sit in a dark cellar for a while so that you really get that maturity and um, the ripeness that is a beautiful, amazing wine. So it's the same with dance, I think, and it's the same with any art. It takes a long time to develop your aesthetic and, it, and give it time. Um, and eventually you will manifest that image that you have in your mind of you know what you really are drawn to just keep making those mistakes and keep moving forwards so you will get there number three so number three create an environment that inspires you so i took it very literal and i moved to rwanda because i was inspired by rwanda i came here in 2016 i saw the rwandan dancers and i was blown away um, by the style of dance and was like, I just have to be around this all the time. Um, and when I'm here in Rwanda, I, I study a lot of traditional dance at a lot of different places. It's <clears throat> really all around you here. There's a lot of musicians, a lot of artists, a lot of poets, um, and they're feeding my soul in different ways. Um, and so, of course, not everybody has the opportunity, the time and finances and the, the life where they can just pack up and leave um, and move to a different continent. But see how you can change your environment already. For example, um, you can change your living room. <laughs> just put some art up that you think is beautiful um, because it might not directly influence your art. But when you feel that you're really inspired by your surrounding, you're gonna raise your vibration, you're gonna shine your light brighter, if that makes sense. So I think it does influence the art you put out when you really feel like you're being fed from all these different directions. 
Um, another thing is that, you know, if you're living in a big city, for example, I lived in London for a while and you're on the tube, maybe you're watching this video on, on the underground and you're thinking, how am I going to be inspired here? Um, the amazing thing about big cities is that there's a lot of people that actually feel the same way and so you can create a subculture, you can create your community of dancers uh, where you create a platform within that um, big city, big grey city, but all of a sudden you find this little hub of this really interesting cabaret joint where you can perform with your friends. So there's always ways of changing your environment even when you feel uninspired by the environment. You feel yourself and you do not need to move to a different continent for that. So that's number three, be inspired by your environment. Number four, think about all the aspects of your performance. Now, this is super important to me and I actually want to make a whole video just on that. Um, I am very inspired by my teacher, Valerie Preston Dunlop, who was a direct disciple of Rudolf Laban. Um, and I studied with her at Laban. She's in her late 80s now, but she wrote a lot of books. And one of those books is called Dance and the Performative. And this book, uh, really inspired me uh, because she talks about dance as a medium, so as a way of communicating, and she talks about different strands within the dance medium. So she's talking about uh, the space you use, the movement you use, uh, the element of the performer, I will talk more about that later, and the sound. And now in her lectures, because this book was written a while ago, now in her lectures she talks about the fifth strand, which is audience. Um, and all these different elements will influence the message you send out uh, into the world. So um, she was mainly talking about contemporary dance and ballet, but it can really be applied to any style of dance. If you're a fusion dancer, if you're a belly dancer, a flamenco dancer, um, you can also learn a lot from um, dance theory for contemporary dance, because I feel like they have really you know, explore that on an academic level and we can really learn a lot from that. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. So I'll, I'll not go into too much detail because I don't want to go on for too long, but I want to give you kind of an idea what I mean. So first strand is performer. So that includes your costume. Basically the first thing that people see when they see you on stage, your costume, the way you uh, have your hair. Is it short? Is it long? Is it blonde? Um, your ethnicity, your age, your shape, um, your gender. So all these, influ all these uh, things that they see right away is right away subconsciously or consciously sending a message. For example, I'm here in Rwanda. I'm a white belly dancer. Uh, sorry, I'm a white Belgian dancer, also a belly dancer. But anyway, so I'm a white Belgian dancer. It's going to be perceived very different how when I perform Rwandan dance, for example, as when a Rwandan dancer does that. Um, I'm not saying it's good or bad or, you know, I, it's not necessarily to attach a value to that, but it's different. And it's realizing that it's different. And um, l l the more background and context we have, about ourselves and the message we send out as an artist, I think the better it makes our art. So it's just considering those ideas, you know, um, different types of gender, different types of dance and so on. Um, so more about that in a different video for sure. Uh, space, consider the space you use. Uh, very important that if you're a fusion belly dancer and you're used to uh, create very intricate move, movement with isolations um, and then you're performing on a big stage some of that movement is going to get lost so think about that I know that we can't always um, control uh, that aspect sometimes we're performing and uh, we already made our choreography and there we are um, we have this big space in front of us and we're like how am I going to fill this stage but perhaps you can talk to the lighting designer and said, can you please give me a spotlight because my movement is very static and I want the audience to just focus on the performance and not feel lost on this big stage. Um, another element could be say that you're making a, a video for YouTube or um, uh, for your Instagram page. Don't just uh, 
um, you know, think about the dance and the costume, also think about the space that is around you, perhaps finding a beautiful environment. Um, there's one video which I'll share in the description, uh, the description of this video um, that I did recently with uh, Roman and Artis, and I'm very proud of that uh, particular video because it's in, in capturing really everything I love about Rwanda as well. Um, so there's an Inanga player, the Omunia Kazi, there's a Rwandan dancer doing traditional Rwandan dance called Yvette, uh, Nio Mufasha Yvette. And there's also a drummer who is playing the Darbuka actually, um, uh, called Dodo Eve. And it's all set in a Rwandan setting. And I think that's really giving a, a good idea of what I love about Rwanda. So I considered all these different elements and Bob Chris did an amazing job in the video. Anyway, I hope you check it out. Um, so consider your space. And last uh, of that point is sound. You can see it's a very diff uh, big topic and I could go on and on forever. Um, so sound, consider your sound. Are you working with live music? Are you working with backing tracks? What is the music that you're using? Does it really go with the movement of the piece? And so on and so on. So you're considering all these different elements. At the moment, I feel like it doesn't make sense for me to um, use CDs, for example. I only want to work with live music at the moment um, because it resonates with me differently and I think I'm very much influenced by uh, what happens in Rwanda here because uh, uh, you wouldn't really see a Rwandan dancer without a drummer. It's very rare that they would just use backing tracks and CDs to dance to, um, to perform with. It just makes sense to put both of those together so yeah um, feel what do what feels right to you if you want to work with live music find yourself some musicians to work with yeah okay so that's number four um, think about all aspects of your performance number five which is the last point but not least learn from your peers and I also want to say collaborate um, so there's a book by Austin Cleon and in that book, uh, it's called Steal Like an Artist. So in that book, they talk a lot about this. Um, the title might sound a little bit uh, controversial, but the idea really is that there's no original arts. We are always influenced by everything in our environment, either environment or the people that we uh, hang out with. Um, so if you have a friend or a dancer friend, a colleague that really inspires you in some way, have a cup of coffee with them or get a bottle of wine and just talk, talk, talk about art. Um, I wanna talk about two artists that really inspired me. One of them is Violet Scrap, who is an amazing fusion artist and her strength really, really check her out on YouTube. I'll, I'll post in the subscription, uh, in the description as well. But I love, I really love her interpretation of the music and I found out that all, pretty much all the dances she does is improvised. So I was like, I, I was talking to her when we were at a festival, I was like, what is your secret? How, how, what is your training like? Um, do you drill? Like how many hours a day do you work out? And so on. And, and she looked at me and she said, I just dance. So she just puts on the music she loves and she just dances for hours and hours in a studio. She doesn't necessarily drill a whole bunch of technical um, uh, dance moves. So she just, that is her drill, is just improvisation. So it makes sense that when your strength is improvising um, and, and musicality, that you're gonna do a whole bunch of that um, in your practice. Um, so she was really inspiring to me. Another artist that I want to um, uh, mention is Kathleen Pearlson. She's a very good friend of mine. Uh, she was a student uh, in dance for a long time. Um, and whenever I saw her perform, I was really inspired by her aesthetic. She, she just always has her hair a certain way, her makeup a certain way, her energy and her costuming. It's like all fits together. It's 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 very uh, integrated and so when when i would look at what she does in her life i mean she is actually a visual artist she makes jewelry she does this really intricate um crocheting of wire which creates this lovely texture um and so i was inspired by this idea of seeing the art as a whole so that you're not just 
working on the dance and then just throwing on a costume, which is what I did for a very long time, but that you're really thinking just as much about the costuming and the way you would carry your hair or you know, the jewelry you put on your body or you know, all these other elements um, as you put the time into your dance. Um, because as I was saying, we are dance artists, we have to see them as equal. We can't just focus on the dance, the dance, the dance, and forget about all these other elements. Um, so she was a huge inspiration for me too, uh, for that part. Now, if you're like me and you're not very crafty and you don't know how to make your own jewelry or your own costumes, collaborate. Just find another artist that is very good at that. And when I say collaborate, I mean collaborate. Don't just tell them, hey, here's a hundred pounds or 200 pounds or however many it is uh, can you make me a nice costume but work with them so I, I was working for a long time with a lady called Chrissy Nicholson she's a costume designer and I would meet up five six times with her and tell her this is what I want to achieve I don't quite know what I want but I want something that flows really nicely when I'm spinning or that really has a minimalist look. I wanted to step away from the bra and belt belly dance costume and I wanted to find something that looked more contemporary but still very theatrical. Um, and that would also show my isolation moves as well as these bigger movements in my dance. Um, and so she created this really lovely floaty chiffon dress. Uh, so yeah, work with other artists, um, collaborate, because uh, it will hugely influence uh, you as an artist too. So that's my five po points, so let me just uh, do a quick recap. Um, so finding your own voice as a dance artist, number one, study with as many uh, dancers and study as many dance styles as possible and go to the source. Number two. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Number three, create an environment that inspires you. Number four, think of all aspects of your performance. That is sound, audience, performer, movement, and space. And number five, learn from your peers and collaborate. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, many more to come, so please do like this video if you feel inspired by it and subscribe to my channel and please do make comments in the comment section. Let me know if there's anything you want to know more about, some topic that you are interested in. Maybe I can make a video about that one day. So namaste everybody and have a great day.